Hello, my name is Homer Knox and I'm with uh, menteachingmen.com. I'm going to be teaching here at the Life Center in Bradenton, Florida. The Life Center is a Christian residential discipleship program and I always found it a joy to, to be working with the men. Again, I like to look up the meanings of word faith. Meaning of the word faith. Trust or confidence in someone or something. Something that is true, worthy of trust. Faith. Ephesians, the second chapter, the eighth to ninth verse. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. As long as I've been a Christian, they teach this, they've been teaching this for 40 years, that it's a gift of God. Acts, the 20th chapter, the 21st verse. Solemnly testifying to both Jews and Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And faith toward who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. And then we have faith too? We have faith in Jesus. Faith pleases God. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 6th verse. And without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is rewarder of those who seek him. Faith moves God, moves God. Romans, the fourth chapter, the third verse. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And so we need to speak faith. Revelation, the twelfth chapter, the eleventh verse. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb, and because of the word of their testimony. And because of the what? Word. word of his testament. Lord, I believe you're going to get me a job. Lord, I believe you're going to get me out of this program. Lord, I believe you're going to get me a family again. Lord, I believe you're going to get me housing. You need to speak that testimony and testify to that. Romans, the first chapter, the 17th verse. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. Faith is a daily thing, gentlemen. 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, the 13th verse. Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Like men. This is a good verse for us here, isn't it? Act like men. Be strong. The Christian life is a walk of faith. It's a walk of faith. Am I right? Every day is a faith thing in the Christian life. It's not sirrah, sirrah. We have faith for what God's going to tell us He does for us, He's going to do for us, and we believe that. We believe that. Faith in God. Faith is a result of teaching. Romans, the 10th chapter, the 14th verse. How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in Him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? Romans, the 10th chapter, the 17th verse. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. We hear the word of God, we either preach, or come and talk the word of God, and we have faith. We get faith through that, through hearing the word of God. There's a Bible dictionary by the name of Easton, E-A-S-T-O-N, Bible dictionary, and this is what he says about faith. I think it's really good. Easton Bible Dictionary. Faith in Jesus Christ is a saving grace whereby we receive and rest upon him alone for salvation, as he is offered to us in the gospel. Faith in Jesus Christ is a saving grace. It's a saving grace. What's grace mean? We're grace is... We don't deserve That's right. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. You don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. Grace. Faith from hearing. Faith from hearing. Also, some people get faith through a miraculous experience with God. Acts, the ninth chapter, verses 3 to 4. And he, the Apostle Paul, was traveling. It happened that he was approaching Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. Verse 4. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So Paul had a miraculous appearance of Jesus, and that's how he got his faith. Now there's other people that have got faith through that. George Foreman got saved after he got beat boxing, and he was in the locker room on a, on a stretcher, and God spoke to him. That's how he received Jesus through that. No one taught him that. God himself taught him that. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 1 to 2. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, for by it the men of old gained approval. We gain approval from God in this way through our faith. 
Uh, we want a sincere faith. First Timothy, the first chapter, the fifth verse. The Apostle Paul was speaking, but the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Let's talk about increasing our faith. Luke, the 17th chapter, the fifth verse. The Apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith increase our faith. I can tell you that you have all the faith you need right now. You don't need any more faith. You have all the faith you need. Now, if we're going to throw you into the lion's den, God will give you more faith for that. But right now, you're set. You're good. You don't need more faith. You need to practice the faith you have and use the faith you have. And how do I know that? Because this is what Jesus says. Now, he's talking to the apostles, the people that have been with him for three years. Luke, the 17th chapter, the 6th verse. And the Lord said, If you had faith like a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. And the Lord says, if you had faith like a mustard seed, did anybody ever see a mustard seed what it is? It's real little. I mean, it's one of those blow away things that, that just would fly up in the air. And we planted mustard seeds one time. It was just amazing how little, and they grow big. They really grow big. Our faith grows as we walk with Jesus. We have as much as we need right now, but as we're with Jesus, Naturally, we get more, don't we? I have more faith than a lot of you because I've been a Christian 43 years. I've seen God work for 43 years. And so that, that adds my faith and work adds to your faith, doesn't it? You know, you know what he's going to do. I got a healing. There's a bunch of stuff that God's done for me that, boom, he's there. He's there. Pastor Cho in his temple prayer, and I've taught that here. Uh, this is what he says. Pastor Cho's temple prayer. Help me to live according to the measure of faith that you have given me. Don't make me proud. Make me to live according to the measure of faith you gave me. Now, I, 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 my, when I read this, I read this every day, Pastor Cho's prayer. And I have in my uh, lesson there that's about credit cards and finances and that. But it, it's really more than that. When I wanted to do men teaching men, I, I went and got counsel. Big decisions and big activity needs counsel. You got to go and get counsel on it. And so that's what I did. I went over to Christian Retreat and talked to Pastor Weaver and said, this is my idea. What do you think? And he said, I like the idea, but he said, go slow. Go slow. Now, I could have gone out and spent thousands of dollars on equipment and, you know, a setting, uh, some type of room to tape all this and everything else. But he was absolutely right. You go slow and you learn and you build. And so I did not step my faith on this. And so sometimes you have to take it slow and, and move ahead. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the second verse, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. As we walk with Jesus, he perfects our faith. Talk about faith requirement in our life. Romans, the 14th chapter, the 23rd verse, and whatever is not from faith is sin. Now, the scriptures use this in regard to eating meat sacrificed to idols. They used to sacrifice their animals, a lot of them, to heathen idols. idols. And uh, they'd have a, like a restaurant, and they'd go in, and there'd be this bowl they'd eat. And then they'd say, well, what ha how, how'd this bull get here? Oh, we sacrificed in some temple to some idol, you know, not of faith. And so they, scripture calls that sin. Let me give you another one. Getting paid under the table. If you guys experience that, guys want to pay you under the table, that's sin. It's not a faith. And so don't do that. Don't accept that. Don't accept that. They wanted my, they wanted my son to do that in an ice cream shop. And I said, no, you're not doing that. That is wrong. It's not a faith. That's wrong. Question from the men. What if you are required to work under the table? No, you're not compelled to accept it. You're not compelled to accept it. You say no. So I'm not going to work like that. You just say no. You say no. You know, if you say no, say no, I don't have work. God will provide something else. See, that's the faith thing. God will provide something else. I'm not going to do that. That's illegal. That's wrong. And when you step up to the plate, that's stepping up to the plate. Then God, that allows God to move in your life. Am I right? Isn't that the way it works? That's exactly where it works. It's God. Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, the seventh verse. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We sing this song in church, don't we? Walk by faith, each step by faith. We sing it here. And uh, I went to an in uh, Institute of Ministry program at Christian Retreat. And they'd sing this song. And all the people that were in the Institute would get up and we'd hop and skip around the whole uh, sanctuary there. So I'd never do that now, you know. But then, in a, you know, we were jumping around and it was, it was uh, really good. It was wonderful.
Uh, Jesus marvels. There's only time, two times in the Bible that it says Jesus marveled. And here we go in the first one. Matthew, the 8th chapter, the 10th verse. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who were following, Truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. Do you remember the story where the centurion says to him, Just say the word. Just say the word, my servant will be healed. That's what they're talking about here. Uh, he was amazed, marveled. The other thing that he marveled in the scripture was they marveled, uh, on, he marveled on their unbelief. Mark, the sixth chapter, the sixth verse. And he, Jesus, marveled because of their unbelief. One of the churches, he went there and tried to do stuff and they didn't have it. And so he just marveled. He just marveled. What are the results of faith in Jesus Christ? And we all know some of these. First of all, it's forgiveness of sin. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we're forgiven. Acts, the 10th chapter, the 43rd verse. Of him, all the prophets bear witness that through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. We're justification. What does justification mean? Justify. Justify, what does it mean? means just like you didn't sin. It's like there was no sin. We're justified through faith in Jesus. Galatians, the second chapter, the 16th verse. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Romans, the third chapter, the 28th verse. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Faith is the way to go. Works don't work. You can't get in by works. Can't earn it. Can't earn it. Question from the men. What are the deeds of the law? Answer. Old Testament law. Approximately 613 Old Testament laws of do's and don'ts. Romans, the fifth chapter, the first verse. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When you got saved, did you have peace? Do you have peace now in your walk with Jesus Christ? I did, because I was a wreck. And as soon as I got saved, that peace came. Now that grows. I mean, I, I had to build that. I built, build that faith and build that. John, the seventh chapter, the 37th verse. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Isn't rivers of living water abundant life? Does not know what that means? You get a river flowing with all kinds of fish and all kinds of things there. It's abundant life. I have scripture that I say every day. And I have four or five scriptures that I have on my prayer list. And this is one of them. I read this every day. And when I tell God, I need more of the river. I need more flow, man. I need more flow, God. Righteousness. We get righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ. Philippians, the third chapter, the ninth verse. The righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. Habakkuk, the second chapter, the fourth verse. Behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him, but the righteous will live by his faith. Righteous will live by... Proud is I can do it myself. You know, we can't do a lot of things, but we need God for most things. And so that pride, I can do it. And one of the things that God has spoke to me about on this website is I started to get prideful in a little bit. You know, I'm doing this for God. I'm, you know, I'm working here. I'm doing that. I'm, it takes time to do all of it. And so I was starting to get prideful. And so now on my prayer list for the website, it helped me not to be proud on this. Help me not to be proud. It's easy to do. Pride's easy to sneak in there. Acts, the 16th chapter, the 31st verse. They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved you and your household. Uh, I use this you and your household. I have unsaved family. And so I tell God. I read it back to him. He said, speak the word. And I say that to him, Lord, you said you'd save my household. So my son needs saved. I got other family. My grandson needs saved. And so I speak that back to God. You guys got unsaved family? Got unsaved family there? Yeah. We all do, don't we? Yeah. We all do. We're all dysfunctional. I don't care where you are. Show me the family. You know, we're all dysfunctional. Yeah. But that uh, you and your household, you and your household. It's a wonderful prayer. We have eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. John, the 14th chapter, the 19th verse. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will live also. John, the 6th chapter, the 40th verse. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day.
We want to talk about works here. Faith equals works. John, the sixth chapter, verses 28 to 29. Therefore they said to him, What shall we do, so that we may work the works of God? Verse 29. Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Dead faith. James, the second chapter, the 17th verse. Even so faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself. Then we get saved, we have faith in Jesus, and then we need to stretch out on that faith. We need, to, we need to start doing works. We need to start coming to church, right? That's an easy one. That's a work. So that's good. We need to start praying. We do that, don't we? That's a good one. And there's other things we need to do. Somebody says they're saved and doesn't... Now, I'm saved, but I don't go to church. I have a guy down the street I talk to a lot. You know, He's saved. He's telling me this and that and this. It's all good. Doesn't go to church. I never see him go to church. Never see him doing any spiritual. He tells me he likes his beer. And you know, uh, what the criteria is when you're saved and you're not saved, that's God to decide. I can only tell you that I want to, I want to, be, I want to be saved and I want to show that through my works. Right? I'm here. All the teachers here, you know, they're all just volunteers. There's volunteer to come in here and do this. Nobody gets paid. But we want to help. We want to help. Well, through faith in Jesus, we are overcomers. First John, the fifth chapter, the fourth verse. For whoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith, we become overcomers. Matthew, the ninth chapter, the 22nd verse. But Jesus, turning and seeing her, said, Daughter, take courage, your faith has made you well. Thy faith has made thee well. Um, you know the thing with faith and sickness, you got to combine that with obedience. <coughs> Okay, you got to combine it with me. I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick. Let's go in the back there. Puff, 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 puff. You know, that doesn't work. You pray for to be healed, and then come right over here and spend a whole afternoon smoking outside. That might not work. That might be very costly. Not criticizing anybody, I'm just telling you what I think. If I get prayed for, I'm going to stop those sin things. Those things, sin things, will drag you down and cause you to mess up what God has for you. And you've got to stop them, especially when you're in a critical time of sickness. You've got to stop doing that. Whatever you're doing, you got to stop it. Matthew, the ninth chapter, the 29th verse. Then he, Jesus, touched their eyes, saying, It shall be done to you according to your faith. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, the 20th verse. Put your trust in the Lord your God, and you will be established. I uh, shared this before. I'm going to share it again. I had a hereditary back problem. My back goes in. My backbone goes in instead of out. You know, your backbone should go out, but it goes in, and it cuts off all those leg nerves. And so my leg nerves, so uh, I started to get terrific pain in my legs. Like I sneeze, it would just like be fired on my legs. I could do one aisle of the grocery store, just one aisle. And I told Bonnie, I got to go back and sit in the car, I'm in too much pain. And so I went back and sat in the car, and, and, uh, and so bang, I went to Hershey Medical Center, big teaching hospital, and they said, oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, we're going we're gonna to open your back up, and we're going to... Uh, drill away in there and we're going to put those nerves in there and then seal seal all that back up and uh, I said I don't know so there's a Christian chiropractor over in Camp Hill brother Jack Kerr just a wonderful man of God and I went to him and he's looking like this he's got these images you know they're about this big and he said two things he said one Homer you got a problem here buddy you got a problem and he said I can't help you I can't help you but he said I think if you let him operate on you you're going to be in a wheelchair well, I had young children you know, I have a question, and so I carried a bottle of aspirin in my pocket here. I would take aspirin all day long. That's the way I do to survive. So finally, you know, you're, you're living life, but you're not thinking spiritually, and so finally, boom, the light went on. You haven't followed James 5. It says, call for the elders of the church, and them pray for you, and a prayer of faith will heal you. And so I went to a little brother in Christ church, maybe 20 people there. It was very small. Cy Lehman, wonderful man of God, was a pastor. And... Uh, and I went up with said, I want you to pray for me. And one of the elders to pray for me. And they prayed for me. I went up in pain. I went back down in pain. And that went on. About a year later, I'm sitting in church saying, gee, my back doesn't hurt anymore. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. And I didn't do anything special. I just followed the word. Where it says, call for the elders of the church. Man, I wasn't praying it out every day. I wasn't fast. I wasn't doing any of that. Stupid on my part. But God stepped in anyway and said, this is enough now. This is enough now. So I can walk. You guys see me all walk. I had trouble before. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the 16th verse. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. 
He shoots stuff at you. Then he shoots little darts at you. Little boom, boom, boom. And now that faith thing is hold it up there and they bounce off. They bounce off. First Timothy, the first chapter, the 19th verse. Keeping faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. Well, unfortunately, we see that here in the Life Center, don't we? The guys get shipwrecked, get off the track. They lose, they lose, they're not walking in faith, and they're losing, they have a good conscience. They've lost that, come home drunk here, drugged, or, you know, and they suffer shipwreck. It's a shame. And you know what the thing about here is? You get attached to guys here. I'm going to hear a lot. You get attached, you develop relationships. Then you come in and say, well, where's Harry? Oh, uh, he came home drunk as a skunk yesterday. And they threw him out. You know what? And then you never see him again. Sometimes I drive up 14th Street. I drive up 14th Street. I see them pull over, but their heart's hard now. You know, I mean, they're not. Uh, it's just a shame. It's heartbreaking. We had this guy here. We took interest, in, and we took him places. You know, he's not part of our family, but we had a rela close relationship. And he drugged out of here all the time. Pastor Ruth and Stan have this great big heart, and so they let guys back in. I think they left them in. We counted 13 times. Just craziness. And so finally he left here. He married a girl, but he he doped up one night and went all crazy. Kept the kids in the room. Wouldn't let anybody see them. He has kids, and then the police came and then he threatened the police. Now that's a no-no here in Florida. He's down in Dade County Prison. I think he got 20 years or something. He didn't hurt anybody, but he went nuts. So. It's just a shame. With faith, we have a lack of fear. Matthew, the 8th chapter, the 26th verse. He, Jesus, said to them, Why are you afraid, you men of little faith? Faith gives us the ability to not be fearful. You don't have to be fearful with faith. You don't have to be fearful. Lack of faith equals fear. Why are you so fearful? Luke, the 8th chapter, the 25th verse. And he, Jesus, said to them, Where is your faith? Where's your faith? Boy, that'd be a horrible thing for Jesus to say to you, wouldn't it? You'd feel like crap out, wouldn't you? It'd be hard. Minister require me. You want to minister? I wanted to minister as soon as I got saved. I just wasn't able to do that. Didn't have all my act together yet. Acts the sixth chapter, the fifth verse. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes faith equals power. Acts the sixth chapter, the eighth verse. And Stephen, full of grace and power was performing great wonders and signs among the people. What happened to Stephen? He got stoned. He got stoned and killed him. He looked up to heaven. He said, I think he says, God, forgive him. Faith gives his ability to be healed. Acts, the 14th chapter, the 9th verse. This man was listening to the Apostle Paul as he spoke, who, when he had fixed his gaze on him and had seen that he had faith to be made well. Paul's walking by this guy and sees that he has faith to be healed. Now, how Paul knew that, I don't know. I guess the Holy Spirit told him. Bang, he heals him. He heals him. What can we say about faith now? Faith gives you the blessings of God. Your faith in God, you'll get blessings. Your faith in God, you get blessings. Faith will sustain you during hard times. When things go bad, faith will help you. It will sustain you. Faith evens out your life. It turns hyperness into rest, joy. If you ever have things happen in your life and go, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? That all evens out now. Faith evens that out for you. And you say, well, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know God will provide. I don't know where I'm going to stay. I don't know this. I don't know that. I don't know this. But as you walk that faith in, He just sets all those things in order. Faith in Jesus Christ provides forgiveness of our sins. We are justified. We have peace. We can have abundant life. We are made righteous. Faith in Jesus Christ also provides salvation for us, eternal life. We become overcomers. We have victory over sin. We have victory over attacks. We have a good conscience, and we have lack of fear. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to have faith in you. Thanks so much for watching. Hello friends, this is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, 
Are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And are you saved? If not, why not? Why not? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day after burial. And he's ascended into heaven according to the scriptures. There is salvation in no one else. No one else. And so if this has stirred your heart and you'd like to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. Come into my heart. Please forgive me of all my sins, all my sins. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me a new creature. And thank you for the Holy Spirit now living inside of me. Amen and amen. If you prayed this prayer for the first time from your heart, you're now born again. You're a Christian. Welcome. Welcome to the family. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, you're now back in the fold. You're part of the kingdom. Welcome. Congratulations. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved, Now What? And that video will help you on your new walk with Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.